Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Thursday, October 30th. The COVID-19 death toll has increased by six as the Ministry of Health reported two deaths on Wednesday and four deaths on Thursday. These unfortunate deaths include a 66-year-old male of New Providence who died on October 4th, a 59-year-old male of Eleuthera who died on October 6th, a 78-year-old male of New Providence who died on October 21st, a 49-year-old female also of New Providence who died on October 23rd, a 35-year-old male of New Providence who died on October 26th, and an 82-year-old male who died on October 27th. The, these deaths pushed the death toll to 142. The Ministry of Health also releasing two days of COVID-19 numbers, Wednesday's cases and Thursday's reported cases. According to the Ministry's COVID-19 report, over the two days, 75 new cases of the virus were confirmed. On Wednesday, health officials reported 38 cases and for Thursday, 37 cases. In total, New Providence recording 60 confirmed cases, Grand Bahama 8, Bimini and Cat Key 3, Exuma 1, and 3 locations pending. The total confirmed cases in country now stand at 6,644, 2,111 active cases, and 4,345 cases have recovered. 88 of them recovering on Thursday, 87 COVID patients are hospitalized, 12 of them in intensive care. 35,435 tests have been completed to date. The impact of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in July 2020 and the subsequent reinstatement of curfews and lockdowns for the entire month of August has caused significant pressure on the country's fiscal position during the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020-2021 elevating the overall deficit to $336.3 million above earlier projections. This from the Ministry of Finance's first quarter snapshot and report of the fiscal year. According to the report, total revenue fell by $251.4 million or 45.5% to $300.9 million as compared to the first quarter of the fiscal year 2019-2020, reflecting the adverse impact of COVID-19 on economic activity and travel Tax receipts declined by $229.3 million, or 46%, to $269.5 million, largely due to a slump in revenue from value-added tax, import duties, and departure taxes, which represents 89.5% of combined revenue. According to finance officials, expenditures increased moderately, largely to cover the costs associated with COVID-19 containment and mitigation, or simply COVID-19 related spending. Spending was increased in social assistance benefits, which saw an almost eightfold increase compared to the, pre the previous year. Combined expenditure firmed by $361.1 million or 6% to $637.2 million when compared to the previous fiscal year. Recurrent expenditure grew by $35 million or a 6.4% increase in which stood at $579.8 million. The largest capital outlay in the first quarter went towards the Access Accelerator Small Business Development Center to support the business community and other development programs, noting that this fiscal deterioration was expected given the reinstatement of curfews and lockdowns. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist said the hampered reopening of the tourism industry or the tourism economy rather, and the extended curfews in October will no doubt put further pressure on the government's fiscal position and may cause some deviations from budget projections for the second quarter. He says the safe reopening of our economy remains one of the most urgent priorities and we must work together to follow public health protocols and adapt our businesses to better contain the spread of the virus. He adds that the government is making a sizable outlays to respond to this crisis during so in doing so rather in areas that can make the largest impact on the welfare of people, unemployment assistance, social support and small business assistance. $3.8 million worth of equipment and supplies have been donated to the Bahamas from the United States government through the U.S. Northern Command, this much coming from Minister of State for Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, Iram Lewis, during a virtual press conference yesterday. He says the donation comes after months of weekly meetings to clearly identify critical needs and resources suitable to match the needs of the Bahamas.
The equipment and supplies include 12 16 feet medically Wally rescue boat, boats that are outfitted with 40 horsepower Yamaha engines, safety stretchers, life vests, and 20 foot trailers. Emergency relief supplies to augment stocks in the three emergency relief warehouses that are situated on Great Inagua, Grand Bahama, and at the Coral Harbor base. Personal protection equipment, PPEs to, to guard against COVID-19 and to support the shelter program in the family islands. Communication support supplies for, for Motorola handheld radios that are used in the national interagency trunking communication system. Materials to repair government designated hurricane shelters in Grand Bahama and Abaco that sustained damages during Hurricane Dorian and mobile air conditioned shelters with backup electrical supply, kitchen and personal hygiene facilities to provide for rapid and efficient sheltering for affected persons. According to Mr. Lewis, a portion of the sheltering facility was erected and is currently in use at the South Beach Clinic to assist with providing medical attention to clients during the COVID-19 pandemic. The minister contends that these equipment and supplies position Bahamian communities to better prepare for respond to and recover from emergencies and disasters. Minister of Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction Iram Lewis announced the launch of Guide to Housing in the Bahamas Build Back Better. The guide is to help Bahamians build or rebuild their homes with stronger resilience to natural events. In an effort to increase building resilience and to ensure that reconstruction, renovation, repair and new construction to residential buildings adhere to Build Back Better principles. Build Back Better guides serve as an easy reference tool for construction methods and details that comply with the minimum standard of the Bahamas Building Code and local construction manual for small buildings. It is therefore our hope that as we seek to rebuild to mitigate against future hurricanes, homeowners, builders and contractors will become familiar with and adhere to code compliance. Mr. Lewis stated that the impact of the devastating Hurricane Dorian, which hit the Bahamas in September 2019, namely on Grand Bahama and Abaco, resulted in the damage to residences that is estimated to exceed $100 million. He says, however, damages to these homes is not just the fault of the storm. Rapid assessments were conducted in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian by teams of local professional architects, engineers, building contractors, and Ministry of Public Works technical officers. The site inspections revealed that, as expected, there was extensive damage due to flooding from wind and sea surge. However, for the damages not related directly to wind and sea surge, damage was largely due to the level of non-compliance. And I repeat that, the level of non-compliance with the prescriptive requirements of the current Bahamas Building Code. Minister Lewis announced that hard copies of the publication will be available at various locations, including NEMA, the DRA, the Ministry of Public Works, hardware stores, and chambers of commerce. Electronic versions can be found on NEMA, the DRA, and other agencies' websites. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.